So a bit of a different video today. I kind of fell down a rabbit hole while researching an upcoming video about Microsoft fonts. And this is the result. Now I'll admit I enjoy a good meme as much as the next bloke, but it's been a while since I'd say I kept up with recent developments. But when it comes to internet memes, one font comes to mind. Impact. And at least according to Google Images, I'm not the only person with this association. But rather than just accept this stereotype, I dove into Reddit to see if Impact is still the font of choice for online memery. Well, after scrutinizing almost 100 top memes and giving them way too much thought, the results are in. And they're rather surprising. To get a good cross-section across Reddit, I actually took the top 30 image macros from the last year from three subreddits, r slash memes, r slash meme economy, and r slash dank memes. Now to be considered an image macro, a meme should have an image juxtaposed with text that someone has added after the fact. That means no phone screenshots and no unedited subtitles over a still from a TV show or movie. I selected these three subreddits as they were each founded in a different year, and so I expect the demographics to slightly differ. So I wanted to see if that would be reflected in how people used fonts. To begin with, Impact, the font that reigned supreme for so long, is certainly not the titan it once was. Out of 90 images, only three, it appears, chose to use Impact. But it gets even worse. In fact, only one of these is the genuine impact. Looking closer, some of these proportions seemed off to me. A little bit too slender, the counters slightly too sharp. Eventually, I figured out the identity of this clone font, Anton, a free Google web font and an option close to the top of the font selection list on Canva. So if impact isn't the font of memes anymore, what is? So we begin with the biggest and oldest subreddit, r slash memes. Here, Microsoft make a decent showing. Of course, we have Arial, as well as Calibri, the default font of Microsoft Office, Impact, that old standard, and Seago UI, Microsoft's standard user interface font. We also see the vintage screen font, Vedana. Next, we have a modest showing from Apple with, of course, Helvetica, being bundled both with macOS and iOS devices. Lastly, Google takes the lion's share here thanks to both Google Web Fonts as well as Android. Open Sans is one of their more popular free-to-use web fonts as well as being a suggested search term within font selection on Canva. And of course, we have the system default font of Android, Roboto. Now, these two final memes posed more of a challenge. At first, I thought these were also set in Roboto. But then I noticed that capital R didn't quite look right. The curved leg was more reminiscent of Helvetica than Roboto. Finally, I found what looks like the likely culprit. It is a font on Google Fonts called Yantramanov. Now, English, Spanish, German, and many other Western languages are all based around the same Latin alphabet. Yantramanov is not. It is designed for Devanagari script which I'm sure I'm mispronouncing, but more importantly, it is a writing system used by many South Asian languages, including Hindi. And this font was designed to complement Roboto. In fact, Yantramanov means robot in Hindi. And so for the design of the Latin character set, it simply copied Roboto, just an earlier version than the one we have now. That's why there's a discrepancy between the design of the capital R in these fonts, as well as other small details, I'm sure. Now, this is not an isolated practice. For example, in Microsoft Word, if you select a font for a non-Latin language like Thai or Arabic and start to type in English, you'll find it defaults back to Seago, Microsoft's default system font, but probably not the most recent version, likely whatever version was most recent when this particular font was released. So this piece of evidence strongly suggests that the people who made these two memes both live somewhere on the South Asian continent or at least have their computer set to a language which is not based on the Latin alphabet. Not something I expected to uncover while analyzing memes, but an interesting side journey. This leaves us with a solitary meme that does not use a font provided by any of those three companies. Now, at first glance, I thought this type might be Gotham, as it is quite a modern interpretation of the geometric sans serif design. Gotham is quite well known for being the font used in Barack Obama's 2008 presidential campaign, but that capital G next to the O looked 
strangely familiar, and finally it clicked. This was Google, but not Google Web Fonts. It was the Google logo. This is actually a custom corporate font made for Google called Product Sans. Which leads to the question, was this meme simply made by an extreme Google fan who downloaded their corporate typeface, or was it made by someone who works for or at Google? Let's take a look at the most recent of these three subreddits, Meme Economy. And here Microsoft have got a significantly smaller showing, but there's a lot of the same font choices except for this last one here, Avenir Next. Quite a well-established font from Linotype that comes bundled with Microsoft Office Online. Apple have slightly stronger representation here with Helvetica in this subreddit, including half a usage of Helvetica here uh, and half something else, which we'll address in a moment. But Google clearly dominates once again, with Yantramanov being the other half of the meme in question, as well as the impact impersonator Anton, Open Sans, Roboto, and a set of three display fonts available on Canva from Google Fonts. Which leaves us with two instances of outliers, both from the same user. And again, it seems like a strangely familiar font. After some digging, it turns out this is SF Pro, the corporate typeface of Apple. Also not something they package with their own software, but something you have to seek out and download, which leaves us asking, is this an Apple fan or is it an Apple employee posing as a meme-loving teen? I'll leave you to speculate on that one. Lastly, we have r slash dank memes. Here, Microsoft has a similar share to previously with mostly Arial and a single instance of Vedana. This group definitely has the strongest representation for Helvetica from Apple, but Google, once again, comes out on top with a familiar selection of typefaces as well as this oddity. At first I was convinced this was some kind of print font, but it turns out to actually be a Google web font, though clearly it's a type revival of a classic typeface. Check out the ball terminals on those R's and Y's. Very nice, I have to say. This is actually a font called Source Serif Pro, which leaves us with our final mystery font. This was by far the most confusing of all the fonts in this set. It's full of little details, which would make you think it would be quite easy to identify. There is a spurred lowercase a, like in Helvetica. You have this geometric Y, but the tail is slightly curved. You have squarish counters inside the lowercase O and G. But then you have this capital J with a singular arm coming from the top as well as squared dots on the I and question mark. All of these details should add up to something very easily identifiable by type nerds or by automated type recognition software. But I tried to process this through what the font as well as Maturator and neither one could identify it. Eventually I was reduced to searching manually through every possible option on Canva and finally I found it. Libra Sans, a font I had never heard of before Somewhat understandably, as it was designed by an obscure Bulgarian font designer to support the Bulgarian language in Cyrillic script. This, again, strongly suggests this user is not a native English speaker. In this case, there are two explanations. This user does seem to post a lot of different memes in various different fonts. And this could just point to the fact they are reposting content that they've found elsewhere online. On the other hand, Reddit has been known to be a target of organized foreign trolling campaigns by organizations like Russia's Internet Research Agency. A common tactic amongst these troll accounts is to post to popular subreddits in order to build Reddit karma. Choosing to use one obscure Cyrillic alphabet font does not prove things one way or the other, but there is a good reason to consider using this font typographically suspect. How language is used in public speeches, in literature and other high prestige contexts is not the same as how it's used in everyday conversation. The name for this informal everyday speech is vernacular, and memes are interesting to analyze as typographic specimens because they are an example of vernacular typography. Inherent to the image macro format is their low effort construction. The subspecies of meme known as the high effort meme reinforces this expectation that memes are meant to be an off the cuff, quick and dirty format. This is why Impact had such a long run. In the early days of the web, MS Paint was probably the easiest tool to reach for to get the job done, and Impact came pre-installed, sitting there ready to use. 
The results from Reddit in 2020 back up this quick and dirty ethos. It's just that the tools have changed. The quickest tool to reach for isn't on Windows anymore. It's on our phones and in our browsers with tools like Canva. These tools all come with default settings, choices determined by software. The low effort option is to just leave these settings unchanged. So any deviation from those defaults should raise some red flags about the origins of these creations. I do wish that Reddit made it possible to sort by top posts from previous years. I think it would be quite interesting to chart the rise and fall in popularity of different fonts over time. So if you do know how to get that data, please let me know in the comments. If you've watched all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much for your time. If you can click on one of the buttons below to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment, that would all help people discover my videos. The biggest favor you could do me right now would be simply to share this video with someone you think would be interested, whether that's sending a link to a friend or sharing it on another online platform, that would be greatly appreciated. I've been Linus, ranting at length about fonts, and I hope to see you in a future video.